Thank you. Now I have to do is the most urgent issue that we're facing in the world today. And we, uh, as far as from a military perspective, what we're looking at is we have been dependent on fuel supplies from other countries that put us in areas that threaten our military and force us to be having a strong influence in areas which by transitioning to clean and renewable energy would give us the opportunity to have less of a need for such military strength in areas. And by doing that, you're also reducing the amount of agitation that we would be creating by having our impact in that area. There's a lot of broad benefits to uh, the development of clean and renewable energy to lessen our demand and impact in foreign areas. Now what I believe needs to happen is we need to basically create the incentive by putting a price on carbon emissions so that the economy is what drives the transition to the technology that you're speaking of. There would develop a huge amount of competitiveness if we were to allow the economy to do the work rather than to have the government try to pick the winners and the losers. Thank you very much. Uh, Sean. Yeah. Uh, Bill and I uh, disagree a little bit on this, although I do believe that we have a responsibility to our planet, to each other, to our children, to be aware of what we're doing. We are going to run out of fossil fuels at some point in the future. They keep moving it back a little bit. Uh, I know his concern is more with the climate change than with the running out of the fossil fuels. And I think that uh, you know, a lot of people that I, I know think that climate change caused by man is a bunch of hooey. I don't go that far. I think that we may be having some effect. I don't think it's as much as Bill thinks it is. But I do think that we may have some things there. And we are stewards of this land and this world. We need to be aware of that. But I think that we need to take time and reasoned approach to get to where we are using more renewable things. I think we should move that direction, but we need to let the free market develop that in an orderly fashion rather than dictating it by the government as you're asking. Thank you. Ryan. Well, thank you. Uh, one of the things that I think we need to do a better job of is recognizing the consensus that has emerged now over many years and decades that in fact this uh, phenomenon of uh, climate warming, global climate warming is real and that it has a significant component of being caused by human activities. One of the things that's frustrating about being able to make progress on this topic is that when you have individuals who are in a position to make decisions, policy on these issues, and they don't acknowledge what has, has been well established now by science over a long period of time, that's frustrating. And I think that we've uh, now, we reached long ago, many years ago, uh, certainly have reached at this point, we should have reached the consensus that needs to emerge for us to be able to make progress in making good, effective public policy. That in fact, global warming is real and it's caused in large part by human-based activities. And we need to deal with that as opposed to sticking our head in the sand. That's the critical thing to start off with from, from my perspective. And uh, I think that renewables are and homeland security, when we're talking about homeland security, one of the first and best things we can do is wean ourselves off of this dependence on foreign oil. One of the reasons we've taken such an interest as a country in Middle Eastern affairs over the last 30, 40, 50 years is because of that dependence. We'd be far better off if we weren't so tied to the fortunes of the Middle East, a very unstable part of the world. Daniel? 
I agree with Bill that it is uh, one of the most pressing issues, and in fact, I say it is the most pressing issues after starving children and children without water to drink. Um, clearly, uh, as we've seen, especially in this last year, but anyone who's been paying attention for the last decade, even two, we are heating up the climate, we're heating up the planet, it's having incredible effects all around. I was just in New Hampshire, for example, visiting my dad. Hemlocks are dying because of Asian beetles that have been infested because of the warmer climate. We're losing fish in the lake, crayfish, minnows, bass, perch, everything else. Um, it's all around. The closer you look, the more scary it gets. Um, my solution would be um, taxing oil at the wellhead and let the price fall where it may. It would encourage competition. It would encourage uh, conservation. Um, we should be looking at simple things like insulation. What we're talking about here, I don't claim to be a scientist or a climatologist or anything like that, but I know enough to recognize that these things are very complex. There's a balance that's been struck for a long, long time in our world, in our natural, uh, in, the, in the way the world operates, that we are disrupting to a significant degree at a very accelerated rate compared to natural processes that have occurred before now. When you have global warming, as I think most scientists, the great majority of scientists have concluded is occurring, it has tangential effects that can be very devastating to certain people. I mean, individuals that are living in islands of the, across the world where their highest point on the island may be no more than 10 feet high. You can have those individuals wiped out if you have increasing ocean levels. So, it's, I don't have an answer to this that's easy. I can't imagine Scott Howe would have an answer. So you that's... believe this president will lower the oceans? <laughs> well, I heard that, but I don't. I, I thought that one thing that troubled me a little bit in the Republican National Convention was the idea that concern about global warming or the possibility of rising ocean levels is something that we should laugh off or that we should not take seriously. That somehow what's really important is jobs and only jobs. Well, look, economic development is critical. Big, important issue for all of us. But to laugh off or to treat as uh, unimportant global warming, no, I don't think so. That's a very important issue. We need our public policymakers working hard to come up with some uh, in, uh, improvement and in, increase in, 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 a, a better way of dealing with that than we had in the past. Bill? Yeah. Well, I appreciate you bringing up the fact that carbon is such a predominant uh, element to what we see in our world today. And carbon is absolutely a car greenhouse gas. What it essentially is doing is it's causing warming, warming of our atmosphere. And we can only accommodate so much of that for our environment to stay sustainable. And so, you know, I appreciate that it's not a, a, a concern for you. But if you weren't even to include that element into the discussion, I think that we need to be considered, considering that in, in another 12 years, we're going to have another billion people on the planet. How are we able to sustain that increase in population burning fossil fuels at the level that we are? We are looking at a situation where peer-reviewed science is explaining to us Peer review meaning that you know it's it's tested between scientists and the the fact of the matter is that we are at a point where we are reaching the possibility of irreversible change where the amount of warming caused by the carbon that you discuss will warm the environment to the point where glaciers will melt away which then means that the solar radiation will not reflect back from the white of the ice, but will be absorbed more by the, uh, the, the darkness of the water. So essentially, it's an irreversible situation. And we're facing that in many other areas. The methane release, which is also a greenhouse gas, will also um, be an issue that we don't know anything about because uh, as the Arctic tundra <coughs> no longer stays frozen as long, it releases the methane, and these issues are right at our doorstep. 
the reason why I'm running as a candidate for U.S. Senate is, like Daniel said, I'm not running because I want to be a politician. I'm running because I'm a human being and I'm deeply concerned about our environment. And to not acknowledge the impact that we are having on it is in huge disrespect for our future generations and our children. Thank you very much. Sean? I think we need to do a lot more research. I think we need to, to look at it. I do think that it's probable that we are having some effect. I don't believe it's as much as some people think it is. But regardless of how much it is, I think we need to do that research and we need, we need to move towards more renewable resources, more non-invasive resources, things like solar, uh, hydropower, uh, nuclear power is one that some of them don't want, some of them do, I don't know. I, I think it's pretty safe from what we've seen, except in cases where it's built on fault lines, which is pretty stupid. But, <laughs> You know, I think that we can do a lot better job for our future than we are doing right now, and I agree that we shouldn't be depending on foreign oil for anything. I think that we should develop our own oil and coal and uh, shale resources here in this country, improving our economy rather than sending all our money to the Middle East and our military people to the Middle East. We shouldn't be doing that either. Well, your original question was, uh, is CO2 a pollutant? And uh, not in a traditional sense breathing carbon monoxide. However, if you breathe pure, I mean carbon monoxide, if you breathe pure carbon dioxide, you get no oxygen to the next thing. Yeah, it's a pollutant. Um, it's supposed to be a degree. Like, we don't know where the carbon dioxide is going. I mean, it's into the ocean, but we don't know at what point that's going to stop. Uh, it reminds me of the titration experiments in chemistry where you're putting phenethalin into a solution, it's clear, and all of a sudden one, one more drop and it's pink. And we could be anywhere near a number of turning points. Methane, as Bill said, pretty much everything Bill said there. Uh, we should not be monkeying with nature. Yeah, we need more research, but we need to, in the meantime, put the brakes on real hard. Um, we need uh, a level playing field economically where we're not subsidizing fossil fuel and nuclear and all the externalities come with that. We have uh, kids in Salt Lake uh, with super high percentages of asthma due to the air pollution. That's being handed out to, the bill is handed out to the kids by the fossil fuel companies. It's, that's a, clearly wrong. I think there's also a huge misconception that it's going to cost more to clean up our act. It's going to cost less if we start insulating put a better plug in the bathtub, as a simple example, as opposed to continuing to run more hot water in. It's a much cheaper solution. Insulating your ceiling is much cheaper than um, burning more methane or whatever uh, natural gas to heat your house. So I totally disagree with that fundamental premise that it's going to cost more to clean up around. It's going to cost less if we do the right things. I looked quite a bit into the cylinder trying to get to the bottom of that. And I found it intriguing that the uh, president of that company, the real mover and shaker, was killed in a small plane crash. As many pivotal politicians are, which is <laughs> a little bit paranoid about these things. Um, there are many, many other solar companies. I follow the science news pretty regularly across the board. It's the first time I go to a sciencedaily.com. There's probably, uh, that I have personally seen, at least two dozen different approaches to solar energy out there now, any one of which, be it uh, internalization of the solar panel, different layering of the, of the panels, different collection systems, um, different um, processing of the uh, silicone wafers, any one of these could immediately undercut the price of coal. Um, should sure, anyone come out of lab, and they're avidly working on this across the board. You do not see it on Fox News. Or traditional limits, and we go look for it on the internet. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Great to meet you. You know, you're, you're sort of a legend. You've been around forever and well known. He's like a fossil.